What is the racial makeup of the organization? Uh, 99.9% .9 Caucasian. Why do you think that? Because I think that traditionally and from the very earliest days of Scientology, or Dianetics even, mm -hmm. Hubbard appealed to the middle class of America. That was who he was reaching. If you go back even at the very earliest photographs of Hubbard's lectures that he delivered on Dianetics, yeah. and you look at the audience, I bet there isn't a single non-Caucasian person in the entire audience mm -hmm. of any of those lectures. Right. It was only when Isaac Hayes, who at one point got all over David Miscavige and said, why are you not reaching out to my people? Yeah. Did Scientology buy a building in Inglewood and one in Harlem and say, we're putting a church there. Right. They're not full of people from the local community, believe me. Right. Subsequent to that, over the last, I guess it's five or seven years or so, there has been a concerted effort by the church to engage and involve the nation of Islam in Scientology. Mr. L. Ron Hubbard. I joined with the idea that I was going to be trained as an executive in Scientology to defend Scientology, to help it grow. I wanted to go and be where L. Ron Hubbard was, which at the time was on the Apollo, the ship that was in the Mediterranean. The Apollo is a ship that L. Ron Hubbard purchased in 1968 to be his floating headquarters for Scientology. He was under heavy attack in the United Kingdom, which is where he was living at the time and decided that the safest place to be was at sea where you can raise your anchor and sail out into international waters and nobody has any jurisdiction over you. and gradually sort of progressed up the ranks to various different positions and ultimately I became the head of the Commodus Messenger Org. Commodus Messengers are the people who work directly for L. Ron Hubbard, so the messengers became his personal assistants and ultimately became the people that ran Scientology. I was one of the first eight or ten people and I gradually became the head of the Office of Special Affairs for the world. The Office of Special Affairs had the responsibilities of dealing with legal cases, dealing with government relations, dealing with public relations, and dealing with enemies of the church. The objective of that part of the church that deals with, quote, enemies, mm -hmm. also, which I used to be the head of, mm -hmm. is to get rid of 
attack us. A policy called fair game. Nobody knows the policy of fair game better than the one who used to enforce it, and that's Mike Grinder. Fair game is the idea that anybody who is an enemy or a critic may have anything done to them with the idea that the ends justifies the means. And there is a bunch of writings by L. Ron Hubbard that describe how you get rid of an attacker. It basically says that you can do anything to a critic or an enemy of Scientology mm -hmm. and not be subjected to any form of Scientology justice, justice. or ethics handling as right. a result. But the church claims that policy has been canceled. canceled. It was canceled for PR reasons. Mm -hmm. And that this does not change the treatment of SPs, suppressive persons. church says the fair game policy was canceled, but carries on just as it did before. So when you first moved to this house, you were fair gamed? Yeah. Hey, dude, don't hey, touch him. Yeah, don't touch me. I know that there is going to be people who will say things that are just outrageous, made-up lies in order to try and discredit me. That's the standard policy of Scientology. I know that there will be efforts to get inside my head and intimidate me into not speaking out by putting up websites. They will take every little thing that I have ever said, they will find anything that I have ever done, and they will take that and expand it into, oh, this was some monstrous crime. If I can help one person who I may have harmed in the past or prevent someone from being harmed in the future, a family from being harmed in the future, this will all be worth it. People spiritually and robbing people of their lives. Fair game is something that I'm passionate about exposing. This is not some little thing. This church is not just running around being annoying and hiring a few PIs. These people are actively destroying people's lives or attempting to. There's always a piece of me that just wants to move on. I feel that at times it's too big of a mountain to climb and I don't know if I can actually do anything about it. But then I get, you know, incensed over it. And I just hope that we do something good here, you know? I really do. I hope we do something good. What I'm seeing is the church continually trying to bully and discredit every single person who's telling their story that is true. I'm saying now, I'm going to help these people have a voice. And so bully me and see how far you get.